The federal government is interested in having Plum Island, which is right out there, become the site for the most dangerous level of biological research. The Department of Homeland Security, which manages the island, is looking at it as, as the location for a new national bio and agro defense facility. This despite the problems for more than 50 years with the Plum Island Animal Disease Center already located on Plum Island. The new facility would operate at biosafety level four, the highest danger level for biological research. The way the federal government defines it, it involves research into diseases that affect both people and animals for which there are no vaccines or cures. The Department of Homeland Security is bullish about Plum Island as the site for the facility because there's not a lot of livestock hereabouts. On the other hand, Plum Island is smack in the middle of the population center of America between Boston and New York, just a mile off the northeastern end of Long Island. And there are plenty of people here. The Department of Homeland Security is having a presentation on the making of Plum Island the site of the new National Bio and Agro Defense Facility. Ed Romaine is a Suffolk County legislator and his district includes uh, this part of Long Island. What do you think about uh, Plum Island being the site of this new biosafety level four facility? I have grave concerns. All you have to do is read the Department of Homeland Security's own words in its environmental impact statement, which said they will be working on diseases for which there is no known cure, no known therapy, no known vaccine, which if released could create potentially billions of dollars of damage in the livestock industry and obviously could impact the human population. Now, one of the reasons that apparently Homeland Security is favoring Plum Island for this facility is that if it puts it in North Carolina or these other locations, Texas, there's a lot of livestock around. I mean, here you don't see cows much on Long Island or even in southern Connecticut or something. You see a few in southern Rhode Island. But to put it in the heartland of America where there's so much in the way of animals could be a big risk, says Department of Homeland Security. Better an island off Long Island. Off Long Island that has millions of people where the North Fork is a funnel with only two east west exits, Route 25 and County Road 48, with no really feasible evacuation plan. And while they give us every security, that uh, every hope that they will have perfect security, that everything will work well, and I'm sure that that, there's, that is the intention. However, as we all know, errors can happen, and the impact to Long Island and its population could be devastating. Now, you were through, as a Suffolk County legislator, the fight over the Shoreham nuclear power plant. And that was a real problem to try to uh, challenge the federal government on that. Suffolk County and New York State somehow uh, emerged victorious. But here you have security concerns, the Department of Homeland Security, which is probably more uh, oh, autocratic than the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, if that could be. How do you think you can be able to, to beat the Department of Homeland Security? I think that there's enough for us to do it. First of all, it's more economical for them to build it somewhere else. It's much cheaper than building it on Plum Island if they choose one of the other five sites. Plus, which the other five sites, many of the lo their local officials actually support that development at those locations. The majority of elected officials, Congressman Bishop, Steve Levy, our county executive, myself, the town supervisor of Southhold, are in opposition of this because we feel it presents too grave of a risk that we don't want to expose our population to. And, it, you know, you weigh everything, the good versus the bad. And on this one, while we respect Department of Homeland Security, we're obviously going to express our concerns. Where's the evacuation plan? What are we going to do? Is there a plan if any of these pathogens escape? How are we going to deal with that? And I'd like to listen to that tonight, but I have to tell you, I start off with grave reservations. Director of the National proposed Bio. National Bio and Agro Defense Correct. Facility. What, what does that mean, being the program director? Because the thing doesn't even exist yet. 
Yeah, we, uh, when you normally you build a large federal facility, it takes uh, a lot of years of planning the site, such as doing uh, any uh, preconceptual studies, siting, and, and environmental analysis. And so while we don't have a facility, we, are, we do have a staff that goes through the planning process, the budgeting process, setting our requirements. So we do that now so we can be prepared to build it in the future. Now, you read the Department of Homeland Security's environmental impact statement for this project, and it appears that the department is very bullish on Plum Island because it says uh, not much livestock in this area. This is on an island. There's a lot of water surrounding the island. In fact, there's a whole ocean uh, to the east. Uh, and some of these other sites, these five other finalists in this competition, are in agricultural areas of the United States. Do I got that right? Do I have that right? You do. And uh, when we started the process, we wanted to evaluate a range of reasonable alternatives. In fact, some of the feedback we got from folks from the mainland was maybe you should be considering an island, which is what we do in Plum Island. So certainly the water, as we say in the EIS, adds a little bit of a buffer to um, protect against any uh, releases. But um, no matter where we site it, we are going to apply a layered safety and security protocol, whether it's on the mainland or in Plum Island. On the other hand, this is going to be a biosafety level 4 facility, mm -hmm. which means do research into diseases for which there are no vaccines or cures that affect both animals and people. And there's a lot of people that live on Long Island, along the coast in Connecticut. I mean, this is, this is really in the center of the Boston to New York megalopolis, the population center of America. Is this a place? to put a biosafety level four facility? And that, that is uh, the question we're trying to address. I mean, we do our analysis based on, you know, what's the proximity to livestock. And I would say that zoonotic diseases, which we do in a biosafety level four, are the diseases that go from uh, animals to humans. They don't go from humans to humans, just animals to humans. So uh, we try to, um, you know, build in those protective barriers. Now, there is precedent for putting biosafety level four in urban areas such as downtown Atlanta, where they work on very, you know, you know, severe uh, human pathogens in Atlanta and Winnipeg and other Fort Detrick and other places. So there is precedent for putting it in an urban area. Now, the, Depart the environmental impact statement also says no matter where you put it, no matter what you do, accidents will happen. Do I have that correct? Yeah, we, uh, we evaluate for the probability of accidents, and in no facility it's foolproof. I mean, we, we carry some degree of risk. The EIS concludes, and we believe in it, it's, it's right, that the probability of accidents is extremely low at this facility, no matter where it's sited. The consequences would, would, would be different for some plumb line versus the mainland because we have a little more protection, but very, very low probability of accidents. Yeah, I mean, before the Chernobyl nuclear plant accident, the Soviets said there's a very low probability maybe every 10,000 sure. years we'd have a serious accident. Right. So you can get a wonder when somebody says extremely low. And the other issue, which I think is in a lot of people's minds now, involves, oh, a problem it's beyond human error, a problem from within. The Fort Detrick scientist who turned out to have been involved with anthrax and spreading anthrax and killing people. I mean, if something of that sort occurs here, and again, we're at biosafety level four involving sure. the most serious diseases affecting animals and people in which there's no cures and no vaccines. Mm -hmm. I mean, is this, a, why not put it underground somewhere in the middle of America, heavily guarded, so no livestock or no people would be affected if there is an outbreak. But that's something we would consider, actually, no matter where, where we site it at, what, what type of security protection we would need that would come with the site-specific security plan, whether we need a berm or put it underground. Um, certainly we're following the situation at Fort Detrick, and certainly we are actually going to be involved in watching what the lessons learned that come out of that to see what we can apply. I will say, not just because of Fort Detrick, we're constantly reviewing our security procedures to see, you know, how they can be, uh, you know, improved and enhanced and so on and so forth. We feel with Plum Island, very safe people have to shower out, you know, they cannot carry anything out with them. So we feel like we've got a very safe facility in place. And again, no matter what you do, there are possibilities and the Government Accountability Office raised the possibility of terrorism. I mean, here's an island, the, the ferry that goes between New London and Orient Point, it goes right along that island. I mean, you could see people fishing on boats right, right next to the island. Right. I mean, security seems to be, to put it politely, quite questionable. The GAO was concerned, very concerned, that this exposed island right here, just off Long Island, just to the south of Connecticut, could be successfully hit by terrorists, and they would 
release, uh, and this is at the Animal Disease Center, uh -huh. they would release animal disease agents, but here you go to, to this, uh -huh. the consequences of a terrorist attack would be enormous. Right. In that light, is this a good place to put this? Well, I think the, that's part of what we're going to be doing. It's part of our sightings process. We would um, evaluate what potential um, security threats are, are evident, you know, whether it's the scenario you lined out in Plum Island or any of the site-specific uh, security and what we need to do to mitigate against those threats. I mean, that's what we need to do, understand what the security threats are and how we would mitigate that if that site were chosen. What do you think about Plum Island being the site of this proposed facility? I think it's uh, too ambitious a uh, uh, an effort to have number four come to Pablaya. I don't think they're prepared for it, and I think it would cost a lot of money to make it safe to ha use four and increase from three, which they go up to now. Yeah, they're biosafety level three, and that, that only, only, that, that involves diseases that affect animals. That's right. Biosafety level four are diseases that affect both animals and, and people, beings, right. for which there's no cure or vaccine, which I mean, in Greenport, where you live, you're going to be, well, you're just going to be about... A mile and a half from Plum Island. Well, I think a little, little, a little more than a mile and a half. I think about six or seven, but uh, that's still pretty close. Well, I, I just think that it's an ambitious uh, project, but I don't think that Plum Island is uh, up to it. Do you think that people are going to be heard tonight? And I recall that you, Mary Ella, have experience with the federal government that, in mm -hmm. fact, you worked in the White House mm -hmm. during the New Deal. Mm -hmm. Here we are in a new century. Uh, new Deal was well, well known for trying to, uh, to listen to people. Mm -hmm. Do you think the federal government today, as, as you observe it, listens to people like it used to back in those days? No, I think they're a little deaf. Why? Well, I don't know why, but I mean, uh, uh, we're having a trouble with uh, uh, Mr. Uh, president and uh, he doesn't seem to want to listen to anything he's made up his mind and makes his announcements and uh, then we're supposed to accept them do you think that that will play out with this plum island decision by the bush know. administration i don't know he only has a few months more so we're all getting very nervous on the other hand this decision is supposed to be made That's before right. the bush administration is out that is correct and so we're we're concerned as to what kind of a decision he would make and I'm, I'm, uh, I love the number four because it's the perfect number, but I don't think it should be coming to Plum Island. Debbie O'Kane, you've long been involved with Plum Island issues. You're a former executive director of the North Fork Environmental Council. That's correct. What's your view on Plum Island being the location for this biosafety level four facility? Well, I believe that there are still many, many unanswered questions, and we have been, we've had very strong opposition to this um, upgrade since actually 1999. I mean, this isn't a new issue out here. It's been an issue since 1999 when uh, a story first broke in the New York Times, and since then, um, the issue has been raised a number of times, and each time we get a strong showing of the public saying that this is not something that they really are in favor of. Of. I mean, there's been quite a number of um, safety and security issues along with environmental issues for many years. And um, once again, a lot of those questions are not answered, haven't been answered over the years. And um, with our elected officials who are also in strong opposition of this, we feel that um, the biosafety level four is not the... Um, it's not the thing for, for the east end of Long Island and for Plum Island. Now, years ago, it was before 9-11, mm -hmm. before the, uh, well, the threat of terrorism was mm -hmm. recognized as it is today, before the Department of Homeland Security. Was even created, yes. Now you have a Department of Homeland Security pushing for the biosafety level four, and them saying that uh, this facility, and they seem to be very bullish about Plum Island for this mm -hmm. facility right. is necessary for national security. Now, how are you going to stop that, Debbie? Well, once again, I think that community opposition seems to be factoring pretty heavily in this decision. And um, once again, there are, are a lot of say, safety and security issues that have not been addressed. And, and we as the public really need 
a large amount of assurances from the federal government, from the Department of Homeland Security, before we would ever feel comfortable with the um, biosafety level four proposal. Would you ever be comfortable with? I mean, accidents can. In fact, their environmental impact statement says accidents will happen. Would you ever, in fact, be comfortable with this at biosafety level four, this island? I think that um, as far as a biosafety level three, just going back to that, studying foot and mouth disease, I believe that that research is, is necessary. I think it's vital for this country. And I mean, we as neighbors of Plum Island have really come to respect the um, Plum Island Animal Dis Research Disease Center for that particular work that they're doing. And what I would like to see is for that work to continue. We are also here tonight to listen to your comments. I hope you had the chance to visit our posters and ask questions of our subject matter experts who are in attendance today. DHS announced its intention to prepare an EIS to evaluate siting alternatives for the proposed MBAP on July 31, 2007. A 60-day public comment period followed during which comments were collected and issues identified. During the scoping process, more than 1,350 individuals attended eight public meetings, where nearly 300 individuals provided oral comments. I point out that we are legally mandated to evaluate Plum Island as a site under the National Environmental Policy Act. Public participation is a vital part of the process, and we will continue to keep folks informed as we go through it. I want to emphasize that no decisions have been made. We are in the draft EIS phase. I know there might have been some confusion talking with some of you beforehand about various news articles that have appeared in the last few days about particular sites. Uh, no decisions have been made. That's why we're here tonight. We're following the process that we started two and a half years ago. And we are in the draft EIS phase getting your comments so we can make a better informed decision once we issue the final environmental impact statement. Under the National Environmental Policy Act, when we open the floor to formal comments, if you pose a question in your comment. We will not be responding to them verbally tonight. And I don't want you to think that that's a, a mode of disrespect by the gentleman at the front of the room. What we have to do is take each comment that we receive and go back and do a scientific analysis and breakdown and make sure we address it technically in the final EIS. So just to make sure that everyone understands, if you pose a question tonight, we're not answering them, and we're not being disrespectful. We're following the requirements that are put forth in front of us. Many of us on the North Fork uh, are very concerned and have persistent and serious concerns regarding safety and security at Plum Island, concerns that are shared by the U.S. Government Accountability Office, which has twice in recent years, both in 2003 and 2007, reported on security and safety issues there. Though the DHS has indicated its intent to replace Plum Island with a new, modernized facility, that replacement may not occur until several years hence, if at all. In our view, the island is today and will in the foreseeable future be vulnerable to security breaches and pathogen theft because physical security arrangements are incomplete and grossly limited. Moreover, we question whether the island's obsolete infrastructure is adequate to support even a BioLevel Safety 3 lab. Given the island's history of incidents, we also question whether it will ever be able to adequately meet the level of security and safety required of a bio-level safety four. Let me summarize some of our safety and security concerns. The lack of a full-time Federal Protective Service presence on the island. The fact that there is, a no, there is not a no-fly zone over the island. That there is limited surveillance of the island's periphery, the areas outside of the biocontainment and administrative buildings are surveilled by stationary closed-circuit television cameras, which are utterly insufficient. That the island is easily accessible to the general public and there, that there are limited, if any, no trespassing signs to advise the public that it is a government facility so boaters and fishermen line its banks regularly. That Plum Island's fire brigade has limited hours of operation and that local fire departments and emergency personnel have not been adequately trained in specific procedures regarding the handling of hazardous pathogens and materials and are limited in their response capabilities if a full-scale fire were to break out on Plum Island.
that background checks on students, foreign researchers, cleaning and maintenance personnel who have access to pathogens and work with or around infected animals are not routinely undertaken, are not done in all cases, and that those same students, foreign researchers, and maintenance personnel are not required to follow strict decontamination procedures and are not fully escorted at all times when and if they do so. We also share the GAO concerns regarding the lack of an incident response plan for incidents um, exceeding Plum Island security capabilities. Some of us are also concerned about decontamination and remediation issues, but I'll address those in my next comments. Thank you. Hi, I'm here tonight to read a statement from Congressman Tim Bishop. I understand that by statute, Plum Island must be considered as a possible location of the new National Bio and Agro-Defense Facility, a biosafety level four facility to meet the needs of Homeland Security Presidential Directive 9. I want to reiterate my strong opposition and the opposition of almost every elected official on Long Island to placing a biosafety level four facility on Plum Island. From the moment DHS became involved at the Plum Island Animal Disease Facility, I have received repeated assurances from the highest levels of the department that it would not be a suitable location for BSL-4 research. I first received this assurance in a meeting with Senator Clinton and Secretary Ridge in June of 2003. At the time, DHS put out a statement, a statement which read as follows, quote, the island setting and biocontainment facilities of Plum Island permit safe and secure research. Plum Island's biocontainment facilities operate at a biosafety level three. DHS has no plans in the near or long term for a biosafety level four facility, close quote. Subsequent to that meeting, Secretary Chertoff echoed the view that Plum Island would not be a location for BSL-4 research. Simply put, it is our opinion that Plum Island's proximity to major metropolitan areas on Long Island and Connecticut make it an unsuitable location for BSL-4 research, which investigates highly infectious diseases that affect both animals and humans. While we can all agree that Plum Island is not a suitable location for a BSL-4 facility, I do believe that it can still play a vital role in our nation's bio and agro-defense, as it has for more than half a century, as a biosafety level three facility. I do not believe that the federal government would be wise to abandon its multi-million dollar investment in Plum Island, including 60 million in infrastructure and security upgrades which are planned over the next few years. While I understand the need for the NBAF, I do not believe it would be prudent for our nation to place all of its bio and agro-defense needs in one basket. Additionally, there is still an important role for an upgraded Plum Island to play with its unique geographic assets and existing infrastructure. Our community has given so much over the past half century to securing this nation. Asking us to house a BSL-4 is simply asking too much. Again, thank you for coming tonight, and I hope you will listen closely to the voices of this community. Thank you. Thank you. I have basically two comments. One, uh, I'm an advocate for Plum Island as a facility. I'm not an advocate for it to be a level four. Um, in the study, you state that the island being an island is an asset for containment of. I would argue that should something happen, the island that we are on exacerbates any problem that may happen. We have one means of egress, and that is to the west. So should something happen, it's accentuated here. Um, so while it may be easier contained on an island, should something happen, it's also much more contained on this island. Thank you. Thank you. The aerial view of Plum Island is accessible on the internet, and since Plum Island is not a travel destination, uh, I, I'm concerned as to why visually it's accessible for the internet. I think this is something that uh, Homeland Security should really look into. Uh, and, and I heard some uh, comments earlier today from an elected official that was very disturbing. You'll probably read it in the paper tomorrow, but it has to do with a terrorist in Plum Island. So I would 
um, ask you to look for that tomorrow in the newspaper somewhere. There is a no, uh, no fly zone uh, over Plum Island, and that is disturbing. And, you know, as Joe Q citizen, when I speak to you and I look at issues from the perimeter uh, and I see these things as gaps, I mean, I, I'm not a rocket scientist, but these are glaring gaps to people on the outside looking in. Um, it's my understanding, uh, and I've been to the island on August 1st, you should know. Um, there's only partial or perimeter video monitoring around the island, and that's extremely disturbing to me because you do not have a perimeter to monitoring system where boaters can come right up to the island. So you're not visually you know, making the surveillance available by video camera. Now, if I go into a 7-Eleven, I'm on video, and you can see the size of cup of coffee that I bought, how many sugars I put in it, and if I put whole milk or half and half. So the fact that the island is video void on some of the island is, is really very, very disconcerting to me. Um, I, when I was entering the ferry the other day, uh, I was stopped as I was boarding the ferry, and I brought my purse as a prop because I was asked to stop and have my bag searched. And I will tell you the search was like this. Okay, you can enter the boat. So that, now, I don't say the gentleman wasn't doing his job. I'm saying the protocol's not working. Um, the other thing is um, uh, the shoreline. Again, I, I speak about that. You really need to have, vot boaters can't be coming up to the shoreline and fishing. It, it just doesn't seem like that's a secure thing to do. And there is access where if you bring your boat around, you can actually walk up on the beach. Um, I'm concerned about the water waste that is dumped into the, the gut, and uh, that is anyone doing water testing there. And you guys haven't done a remediation on an oil leak since 1998. There was 30,000 gallons. You remediated nine. And if you can't secure what you have now, the bio level four is, is not even an option. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I've been a resident of the North Fork for the, almost a half a century, I and my family. I want to say first that I don't believe that risk has been properly assessed in this environmental impact statement. I want to go at it a number of ways. First, let me say the statement in the, um, in the uh, executive summary that says normal operations pose no threat to the surrounding community is absurd on its face. Um, there's no way that let's assume for a moment that the operations are normal but that assumes that all of the material the construction the pipes the filters are perfect otherwise the normal operation does pose a hazard and if we're going to assume that the construction the, and the material is perfect well we're living in a fairy and a fairyland. I mean, all we have to do is look at what's happened in New York City just now, where they discovered that the buildings department, which is supposed to inspect concrete, couldn't do that. And, and dozens and dozens of high-rise buildings will have to be re-inspected because the concrete wasn't poured, poured properly and because there was fraud. And if you think the federal government is exempt from fraud, you might just want to look at some of the GAO studies. Uh, just look at Iraq. I myself, when I was in Congress, was involved in uncovering major fraud in actually Department of Agriculture finance programs. Let me say, too, that not only is that statement absurd on its face and based on assumptions that nobody could agree with, but the idea that the risk is low to none, again a quote, except for fire from accident, is another absurdity. Accident. Of course, accident can happen in the construction. We don't want to talk about fraud. But it can be accidental operation, all kinds of things. People might slip through the security. There might be negligent operation of the facility. All we have to do is look at what happened a few months ago when, some Air Force, when an Air Force plane carried nuclear weapons. This was a whoops. Well, what about a whoops here? A whoops here means that human beings are going to be affected. No discussion of intentional um, uh, risks caused by intentional acts. Think of what happened now with anthrax. In light of that, can anyone here, 
Can anyone here say that the risk is, is minimal, negligible, or whatever? You have people who are crazy. You have, I was a former prosecutor. You have people who are crazy. You have people who are disgruntled employees. You have people who are angry at their family, their lovers, their whatever. This is too grave a danger to human life, and this EIS doesn't deal with these issues. Thank you. I represent the people of the first uh, district in the New York State Assembly, which goes from Orient Point, Fishers Island, Plum Island, Shelter Island, to Brookhaven Town. I have two federal facilities in my district, the Brookhaven National Lab and Plum Island. And uh, I think I would like to contrast the two, and I think what we're dealing with here is a community, as you're hearing from the comments tonight, that is trying to build its trust level with the facility, uh, but the communication uh, and the dialogue between Plum Island and this community seems to be more of a, 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 a more recent uh, dialogue. I attended one of the first community forums that Plum Island held in quite a number of years, just last year. So when I'm new to elected office, I'm in office three years now, so I don't have any uh, resentment to the fact, but other legislators and, and prior elected officials who wanted to reach out and, and know more about the facility and maybe tour the facility and have a better understanding were rebuffed. And when that happens and they're not able to communicate with their constituents, that's a problem. So I applaud the administration for their outreach now, but you have to understand some of the trepidation uh, the community is just building their trust level. Brookhaven National Lab had the same issues 10 years ago. Uh, and not only were they you know, not a, a good neighbor at the time, they were an irresponsible neighbor back then, and there were some problems uh, in terms of uh, contamination of our groundwater. But they were able to reach out to the community and, and have an open dialogue and an honest dialogue, and they went through a remediation process. And now I think there's a certain trust level with the community. Actually, I think they're celebrating, uh, it's more than 10 years, it's 25 years since they put together a, a citizens' advisory panel that uh, continues that dialogue and, and that open conversation about what's occurring at the lab. I think that would be important here. But with this kind of history, we understand the, uh, the economic benefit that the uh, facility has uh, provided to this community in Connecticut in millions of dollars of, of salary. Uh, and we understand that it has uh, provided a, a great deal of beneficial science. Uh, and, and I guess we're proud of that as we're, as we're learning about that. But as a level safety three, you are taking a look at disease that's passed animal to animal. Level four, you're looking at disease that has passed from animal and potentially to humans. And because we haven't had the ability as a community to have that kind of dialogue, we're not sure if we're completely comfortable with how th the current protocols. So to ask us to sign on and be supportive of, of something that's even more dangerous could be very problematic for us. So I think I, I speak on behalf of the majority of my residents when I say no to a level safety four. And